Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest. Today we've got a look at Bliss OS. I've got Bliss loaded up on the laptop here, so we're going to boot in. I wanted you to see the splash screen and all. So Bliss OS is not a Linux distro. It is an Android operating system designed to run on PCs uh, and laptops like we have here. I released here in December and I'll step through the process of how you get the latest release. It's a little... You have to go through a step or two with a password in order to get the latest download. I wanted you to see the splash screen here, and we'll go ahead and bump up the brightness as soon as that boots. It may be a little dim for you. So Bliss OS is Android, and this particular version is Android 10 as we see this loading up. And I'll tell you, other than a few little, uh, as you can see, the sound works. For an alpha release, this is really impressive. Uh, the touch screen does work. You see you've got a taskbar at the bottom there. Hopefully that's all showing up for you. And we'll zoom in and take a look at a few other features here, but I just wanted you to see this. Uh, this is about the fifth time I've loaded up Bliss OS and have installed multiple applications. The Play Store does work, so we'll run through all of that. Okay, before we get into the actual operating system, I wanted to bring your attention to these two pages, and I will have the links to the video notes section for you on both of these pages. So the first page is the Bliss OS website. This is where you can scroll down to the bottom. You'll start out at the top here and read through uh, all about Bliss OS 4x86, Android for your PC. And uh, when you get down here to the bottom, this will be the latest version. This is what we're going to look at today. Uh, actually, let me keep scrolling. There we go. And this is Bliss OS 12 testing. This is in alpha stage. What you'll need is a password to type in or paste in here, and then you'll get a link right here to download the latest version, which is based on Android 10. And where you'll find that link is over at one of my favorite sites, XDA Developers. You'll scroll down, and I'm not going to give you the password because I don't want to give up the gig for the developers, but I will give you a little hint here that on this page, and please take the time to read through. There's lots of great information here. I will tell you that it's close to this social media image here, so I'll give you that much of a hint. Uh, but do take the time to read through. There's lots of great information about what's going on. Uh, within Bliss OS and what's to come, what issues, things like that. So it is worth the read. All right, so we'll move on over to the operating system and see what it's all about. Well, I tried about seven different screen recorders with Bliss OS and could not get any of them to function. I'm sure some of you watching this will throw out a screen recorder app that'll work just fine, but I can't get it to work on this system, so we're going to have to do this the uh, hard way and this is not ideal but I wanted to step through this with you. So the first thing you'll notice with Bliss OS is this taskbar here at the bottom. As you boot in you'll get an option to choose this or the pixel launcher. So I went with the Bliss's uh, own taskbar and I actually I believe this is just a third-party app that Bliss has used uh, within Android here. But you get a traditional launcher um, you know, it's reminiscent of what you'll see on your phone screen where you simply scroll through the various apps. Now, before I get into some of the applications I've installed, I do want to talk about the installation process for this. And it's very simple. You'll download an ISO image and you'll just burn that over to a flash drive just like you would with a Linux distro. The installation process is very straightforward, very much like a Linux distro as well. Uh, insert the USB. Go into your boot menu, choose Bliss OS. You've got two options. You've got one to install a live environment. It's a little clunky compared to most Linux distros, but you'll also have the option to do a direct install. I went with live first to make sure the hardware was going to work. Everything seems to work. Everything from brightness to audio. Uh, the touch screen works so we could launch into the Play Store here, for example. You do have a window mode there. Uh, you've also got a widget screen, so if we go there, um, it kind of is an overlay screen. And you cannot click and drag and place widgets wherever you like, and I don't think you're going to be able to see that. Maybe if I turn there, maybe you can see the widgets now, get the reflection off of it. Uh, but the widgets are in grids, so you're locked into placing widgets within the grid. Uh, the window effect works fairly well for the most part. You'll see here the Play Store. Um, I've been able to install a ton of apps, everything from Nine Email Client to you know photo editing apps, CloudWorks, 
there is a file menu here or a file manager I should say uh, videos images downloads and then you can get into the main folder um, there is a dark theme which I have in place here um, as far as the apps, everything seems to just work. You know, it's hit and miss within the window mode. Go into settings here real quick and you'll see your typical Android settings. Everything from network and internet to connected devices. Bluetooth worked on this device. I can't really speak to battery life. I've only uh, played around with this maybe four or five times. Display settings, the wallpaper settings are a little difficult. Uh, volume is good. Uh, security accounts, um, you know, you can easily set up your Google account to work with the Play Store. And that's one of the big advantages here is you've got an OS designed to work on your laptop that does work with the Play Store. One of the apps that I could not find for this particular setup was Netflix. So I guess if you wanted to use Netflix, you could go through your browser, but Amazon Prime worked. And we'll just kind of do a quick rundown here of some of the other apps. Memento Database worked. Um, you've got a default email client here. I installed Firefox. It works fine, although it thinks it's on a phone. Um, you'll find messaging and phone app, which I thought was interesting. Not going to work on the laptop, not with this particular setup. And then you have some defaults like play games, play movies. Play games does work, so we'll launch into that. You've got a little uh, icon here for full screen. And that'll take you in, and we'll jump over here to Solitaire, for example. And there you go. So play games and things like that seem to work. So this is more of your traditional launcher here that you'll find on your phone, back, all apps, uh, home screen, things like that. And that'll pop you back over to the Bliss OS taskbar. And this allows you to pin apps. So if we've got Google Play Games set here, so we could just pin that to Recents. You'll get your typical... A taskbar drop down from the top here and you can go in and adjust all of your settings from there but it's uh it's android it's on your laptop or your pc it interacts with mouse and keyboard for alpha again i'm pretty impressed this will not replace a linux distro for me at this point you do have right click menu too i wanted to mention that so if we come down here on an app and you right click well if i could right click let me do that by pressing and holding and from right click, you can go to a new window, unpin from recent app info or uninstall from there. You can do the same within the uh, launcher menu. All right, well, we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, check it out. Hope you have fun with this and we will catch you later.